I remember how stressful it is. Yeah. You know, you're you're literally trying to go and you know, like when a person typically moves into a house now, granted you have all your stuff, like that's a little bit different, I guess. But like when you move into a house, like you kind of feel okay, like you know that you've got a few weeks. Like we had to set up a house ready for people to come and enjoy it within 48 hours yeah and so i just remember like you were doing a mad dash to try to and we were like hey we'll just clean this place ourselves and then we got in there and we realized no we got to like move furniture and just get the place functional and we you were like on the phone calling cleaners like trying to find somebody who would come out well at that point we didn't even have cleaners like we we didn't didn't have have anybody anybody lined up yeah welcome to str unlocked a podcast for driven vacation rental investors looking to gain the freedom that comes with an abundance of time and money I'm April. And I'm Nathan. Our life is busy with three small children, full-time jobs, and not nearly enough coffee. And we're unlocking success with short-term rental investing every single day. Join us in our journey as we learn and grow together. If we can do it, so can you. Hey guys, welcome to episode number three of the Short-Term Rental Unlocked Podcast, the STR Unlocked Podcast. At some point, we're going to have to decide, is it going to be short-term rental or is it going to be STR? <laughs> I have no idea. We haven't even really checked to see if that name even is available. Oh, I've have checked. We? Okay, I've checked. Right. Yeah, I've checked. checked. I've checked. checked. It's, it's okay. It's open. It's open. Uh, the kids are now in bed, so now we can start to sit down and have a conversation. I'm here with my beautiful wife, April. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Nathan. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to finish up kind of our, our little story about how we got uh, started in short-term rentals. Uh, this is going very fast. We're, we're trying to move through this as quickly as we possibly can to get to episode number four, the next episode, which is essentially going to be all about the pricing strategy that we've been using and we've been having massive success with. That's kind of the thing that I'm excited to share with you guys more so than anything right now, because I think it's going to help a lot of people. Um, so going back to episode number two, Two, you know, we talked a little bit about once we made the decision to uh, invest in short-term rentals to to open up a small uh, a, a short-term rental small business, essentially is what it is, a hospitality business. Um, how we actually got our place under contract. So this episode, we're gonna really talk about like, okay, we're at Panera, we're signing the papers. It was like eleven thirty in the morning. Yep. Right, we're signing the papers. Uh, our our newborn is in a car seat on the floor as we're signing. I'm drinking like a coffee. I'm thinking to myself, this is like the weirdest experience I've ever had in my life. <laughs> it really was. It really weird. was. And then we sign the papers. We hop in the car. We go home. We throw our three young kids yep. and grandma so she can watch the three young kids while we <laughs> get this place set up. Grandma. Yeah, thank goodness for grandma. And uh, and so we throw everybody in the car. And we head up to Gatlinburg, Tennessee to get this place up and going for our first guest. What were you thinking? Well, I will say that the first indication that it was going to be a hard trip uh, was probably when the three-hour car ride turned into six. <laughs> yeah. if, if you have a family, you understand. If you have small kids. Oh, yeah. You stop at every rest stop. You, <laughs> yeah. uh, you, know, you have to change the baby five times. Yeah. There's inevitably going to be some sort of mess that you have to clean up. So that was, uh, that was fun. But, yeah, jumping in the car, going up, trying to set up that cabin. Uh, we had a long list of stuff. In the weeks leading up to actually signing on the cabin, we had gathered a lot of supplies. We knew that we were going to be managing it ourselves. We knew that we needed to get our own towels and sheets, and we needed to have three different sets. And so we spent a whole lot of time gathering all these materials. The car was packed to the brim. I actually think that we brought two cars, didn't we? We did. We filled up yours. We filled up mine. We drove separately. Um because 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 in the beginning one of the things was we were providing our own linens right. and that took up a lot of space because our our goal was to kind of invest the money into the linens and we'll, we'll again we'll get more into that in like future episodes but that was a part of what was taking up so much right, space right yeah. so we had we had the cars packed to the brim i don't think that we could even see out of the backs of them uh, decided to drive up there same day we drove up there we drove up to the cabin uh, it was gorgeous. I remember it was, it was such a pretty day yeah, yeah. and we walked in and, you know, new cabin smells, smells like fresh cut wood, right? So you walk in and the view is really pretty and then you kind of yeah. look down and there's dust on everything. <laughs> there's furniture missing. I don't think we had a stove when we walked in. Do you remember that? There wasn't That's a cabinet right. door yeah. in the kitchen. Yeah. And we looked around because our first guest had actually booked to arrive on the 27th we were really trying to get somebody in before christmas so we signed on december 21st and we drove down the exact same day we were trying to get the whole place set up and ready to go and we just kind of looked around and we were like okay so all right 
Let's do it. Yeah. So one of the reasons we put in an offer on this place and we decided to go ahead and purchase it was because it was new construction turnkey. <laughs> I mean, we we literally thought that we were going to be work, walking into like nearly a perfect setup that really all we were going to be doing, what we were hope you know, we were hoping we were going to be doing was throwing the sheets on the bed. <laughs> Maybe and changing the lock. Changing the lock and like that's it. Well, we get in and it's like none of that. Yeah. And for those yeah. of you listening, those were unrealistic expectations they were, on our side. We for were sure. very naive. For sure. It was turnkey in the sense of turnkey being, you know, most of everything is ready for you, but it was new construction. There were some things that needed to be done. We had some punch list items that honestly still haven't been done yet just because they, you know, haven't been prioritized yeah. uh, high enough to get done. So, um, you know, there were a lot of things that we weren't aware of when we walked in, for example, bear trash cages. You have to have them in the Smokies. We did not. We had no idea what we were doing as far as walking in and, and what we needed and what we didn't. So there were a lot of things that were learned and it was quite the experience trying to set it up. As you can imagine with three young kids running around yeah. and trying to get things done. That was an absolute nuts couple of days because that was the week of Christmas. Right. 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 And yeah. And so we only had really a few days to get this place up and going before our, you know, our first guest came in. Um, and it was a mad rush. I mean, if you're an investor listening to this who who's done this before, you get it. Like you you know, and you're sitting there nodding your head, and you're probably smiling a little bit because you're like, I I remember how stressful it is. Yeah. You know, you're you're literally trying to go, and you know, like when a person typically moves into a house. Now, granted, you have all your stuff. Like that's a little bit different, I guess. But like when you move into a house, like you kind of feel okay. Like you know that you've got a few weeks. Like we had to set up a house ready for people to come and enjoy it. Within 48 hours. Yeah. And so I just remember like you were doing a mad dash to try to, and we were like, Hey, we'll just clean this place ourselves." And then we got in there and we realized, no, we got to like move furniture and just get the place functional. And we, you were like on the phone calling cleaners, like trying to find somebody who would come yeah, out. Well, at that point we didn't even have cleaners. Like yeah, we, we didn't, didn't have anybody, anybody yeah. lined up. Yeah. We didn't realize that we would need, um, I mean, we knew that we needed them, but we thought that it would be, you know, easy. We'd be able to call somebody and, you know, we'll just do interviews while we're there. We're going to have time to be able to do it. We have four days. Right. Yeah, that wasn't the case. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 what I what I really want people to take away from this is, you know, I, I would encourage people, don't stress yourself out. There's always going to be things that you're not going to expect just because you don't know what you don't know, right? I mean, like that was the symptom that we were basically suffering from at the time. But what I want you to do is I want you to learn from our experience and I want you to know, like, even if it should be relatively turnkey, just expect for things to take longer than you think they will to get this place set up. And what that's going to mean is every, anything and everything that you can do ahead of time to go ahead and get things locked in and go ahead and get things planned, the better. Like the more you can do that, the better you are. So like we could have went ahead and started interviewing cleaners and things like that. We just didn't, you know, right. and it was a pretty tight time frame. I get it. But like that's definitely something that we could have done ahead of time and then basically had that schedule already, you know, that, that, that clean already scheduled for them to come in and take care of that stuff. Um, so it was definitely a very stressful time going in. Um, and I think one of the other challenges was, and this is something I want people to know that you definitely, you definitely, and, and it's getting better now. I will say it, it was a different environment six months ago, or I guess eight months ago. How long have we had it? Oh gosh. Eight months, eight months, seven months. Yeah. Something it, like that. it was a different environment back then. Like back then you like, I, I don't like, you're just happy to get a place, right? Like you're happy to have a property. You're happy to get a business that you can get up and running. Um, especially one that you know that you're going to be proud of. That was a big deal for us. We wanted to buy a property that we were proud of. Right. And so, you know, it was one of those things where we didn't really ask a lot of questions in the beginning, as far as what does turnkey actually mean? Like, like what, what, what furniture is actually going to be there? Like, will there be decor on the walls? And there was like, they did bring in stuff. There was, there was stuff on the walls. It just wasn't necessarily the vibe in every case that we would have gone with. Right. right. And so like we walked in and this is actually a big deal. And we're going to do a whole episode on, on interior design when it comes to short term rentals. Cause what we're finding is that as time goes on, as, as the supply of short term rentals increases, um, even though demand is increasing, it's not outpacing the current rate of supply. Um, as things get more competitive in the short term rental space, the, the design of your space is actually critically important, right? Critically important. We're gonna do a whole nother episode on that. But, you know, not every room we were really excited about, like the furniture, it kind of felt kind of old and outdated. 
it was kind of it, it kind of more rustic than what we were going it was for. more rustic than we were going for it definitely was it you know for a property that we were kind of envisioning to be more of a luxury like whatever that means more of a luxury space it definitely didn't feel that way it definitely kind of just felt like grandma's cabin and so it's kind of this weird like they're kind of infusing like the furniture and interior decor of grandma's cabin with like you know a place that we were kind of thinking was a more modern feel and 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 had a more modern design on the inside and some of the elements that they had brought in had a modern element and then some of the stuff like literally looked like it was plucked out of the 90s in the smokies right so it was kind of a tough battle because the the property in and of itself didn't really have much of a cohesive flow it 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 very much kind of felt like they you know just kind of literally just threw furniture into the space like it was like okay we need a living room set what's available got it and then they were like okay so what kind of dining room table set do we have got it that's all we yeah. and they were like what space do, what do we need for upstairs what do we need for downstairs and they're like, got it got it and they were just kind of throwing stuff into the space without any real intentionality behind it you know and so that was something that we kind of struggled with in the beginning and to be honest with you we're still struggling with now um, yeah, so I mean, anybody who's going into a new construction or a turnkey, and if they're putting furniture in there for you, um, just be aware, something that we found out after the fact that we wish that we had known is that you can actually, most of the time, builders will give you a credit to be able to basically allow you to choose your own furniture from whoever you want to. So they'll give you a credit instead of actually furnishing that for you. So that you can go and you can choose what you want to spend that money on. That's so the way to go. Something that we we really wish that we had known ahead of time. Certainly, it was nice to be able to have some things or most of the things in there. And really, we we could use most of it. But if we had had the opportunity to actually choose our own stuff, it probably yeah. would have made that process a lot easier. So just be aware of that if you're if you're going into a new construction. A hundred percent. Like that was that was definitely something that we. Didn't know in the beginning, and we wish that we did. Like, we wish that we did. So uh, so anyway, so we get in, and, you know, and even though it was turnkey, even though there was furniture there, in a lot of cases, it didn't feel complete. I mean, I, you know, like there was, you know, there was a lot of things that we felt like in our property to get the ADRs that we were hoping to get out of the place, to get the kind of return that we were hoping to get out of the place. There was a lot of it. It just didn't feel like a comfortable space. Yeah. And so like that was the first kind of significant task that we had, which was, OK, we have to now go out, go out in town like we were going to Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg, all the stores, all the decor stores, all the all the furniture stores. And we were like, how do we start to bring in pieces that kind of make sense with what's already there? And because we couldn't return it. We checked. Yep, we, <laughs> like, tried. we tried. So like what, what what can we pull together to try to make this space feel inviting and, and, and as inviting and as comfortable as we possibly can? So, yeah, it was like a mad dash. For sure, like two days, 48 hours. It was crazy. Uh, we had kids that was running around in one part of the house. We were trying to like get one, the other part of the house set up. We, we finally found cleaners who were able to come in kind of last minute and, and help us, which was like such a big blessing. We were very stressed for sure. Uh, because again, literally, when we walked out after the 48 hours, we had guests coming in within another 24 and so we, everything, and then the hot tub. Oh my God, the hot tub. <laughs> that was such a, was such a disaster. We were so glad that we had a hot tub because yeah. they were in very high demand at the time and supply, there was like a supply chain block of, of hot tubs. So very grateful that we had one, but oh my goodness, having to deal such with getting that thing cleaned and we had issue after issue after issue. Thankfully, I think that that's now resolved, but it took a solid, what, month and a half mm -hmm. of guest complaints just to try to get that resolved. Yeah. One of the things that we're going to be doing for you soon is we're going to be putting together kind of a list of all the things that you're going to need to get your uh, short term rental up and going. I remember you spent massive time pulling that stuff together, like especially Lennon's. Now, it, what's funny about this whole story is we actually ended up switching cleaning companies for a variety of reasons to a company that actually provides their own Lennon's. So like the, all the Lennon's, where, where are all those? Like where, where is all the Lennon's? <laughs> I'm pretty bought? sure that our cleaner, our first cleaner still has them. Oh, they didn't right. return them. Yeah. That's another story that's for right. another that's day. Another story, Bet your yeah. cleaners. And before you fire them, make sure that you get back all of your Lennon's. Yeah. So, um, you know, that, and again, that's like a really great, that, that's, I even forgot, I, I totally forgot about that. And that's like a really great example of the things that you're not going to know going in, but, to, but that you'll learn. But like it, it, at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. It it's feels, not. it feels very stressful and it feels like it's a big deal in the moment. But now looking back and thinking on it, like it, you know, eight months later or whatever, like it's just not that big of a deal, you know, in the grand scheme of things. 
But anyway, so I remember how much time and how much effort and energy you were spending, you know, getting everything up and going with our short term rental. You were researching like try because you you you're always trying to like get the best quality thing you can for the most affordable price you can when you're first starting, which is totally understandable. And so I remember you, I mean, you had spent hours pulling this stuff together, getting, uh, placing orders for everything, getting everything in our, our house looked like an Amazon <laughs> warehouse for like a little while, just with all the boxes for all the linens and towels and, um, you know, and, and, and all the, all the small things that we thought the kid, the small kitchen appliances and all that kind of stuff that we were taking to put in, into the rental. So, um, we're actually going to be pulling together here in the next couple of weeks. We're going to be pulling together a list that will hopefully help you guys. So if you're looking at, you know, where we got our linens from, cause they were great. Like, and we got they them were a great, great press. Yeah. yeah they, felt like fantastic. Even though we ended up not keeping them and use them in the rental, <laughs> we have all that stuff kind of pulled together into a resource that's going to be helpful for you on our website. So once that's published, we'll let you guys know and, uh, and, uh, and, and direct you to those, to those, to hopefully those helpful resources. I just said resources twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be helpful. It's going to be helpful. Um, anything else you can think of, like when it comes to when we first started setting up that cabin, is there anything oh. else that, that like sticks out? Gosh, I remember the amount of, sleepless nights part of it because yeah. we had the baby with us and so he wasn't yeah. sleeping especially in a new place but part of it too was that we were going non-stop I mean I'm, I'm talking we got up in the morning at six we had coffee and breakfast with the family and then we were pretty much out the door and like in stores trying to find things as yeah. soon as they opened and we were driving around in traffic traffic's crazy heavy it was in Gallagher and Pigeon week. Forge yeah. Uh, the crazy. week before Christmas is just bumper to bumper. And so it was, uh, I mean, honestly, it was, it was a little miserable going from store to store trying to find things because you can't really you know tell what you're going to need until you actually see it. We were trying to get the things that we needed as quickly as we could and then back to the house that we could get the kids settled. We were trying to you know figure out what we had to do that time and what we were going to come back and do later. It was, it was kind of a mad dash. So if you can have a list of things that need to be done and if you can hire out to have those things done before you get there or after you leave, that'd be a game changer. Totally do it. Yeah. yeah. Next time, I think that we're going to hire somebody to just do everything for us. We'll just give them a list of things that we want done and then let them have at it. A hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. So I'm really excited for you guys. Uh, episode four, we're going to be doing a deep dive on a uh, kind of a pricing strategy that we have found to be very successful for us. Could you remember what our, do you remember what our occupancy is? Uh, I know it's changed a little bit because we had a couple cancellations and then mm -hmm. uh, we had another booking, but I want to say for, for August and September, it was something around like 75% uh, occupancy. Which as of right now, I think it's uh, Rank Breeze that shows you. No, yeah. it's uh, it's uh, um, our Price Labs. Price Labs will show you kind of what the market occupancy is for the next, I think it's 15 days, 30 days, 60 days. Um, and we're definitely like our cabins performing above uh, market uh, performance, which is really, really cool. And yeah, then what was the it for really, July? Well, but the really nice part is not only is the occupancy high, but our ADR is still high. Yeah. So we didn't just drop yeah. our ADR to get all those bookings. We actually were able to come up with a strategy where we still kept our ADR high, uh, but we were able to increase the occupancy. So super excited to share that with you guys next time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Occupancy for July. I think that we were at 85% for July. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was like, it, it was, it was crazy. It was, it was, um, it was definitely, it was very stressful. And this is talking a little bit about our next episode, but like it was very stressful in the beginning of the year. There was a lot of things that was happening with the economy. Bookings went down. Everybody was flooding the Facebook groups and like freaking out because, you know, for a number of reasons that we won't talk about on this particular podcast, but um, freak, everybody was freaking out. And we were too, because we were experiencing the exact same thing. But what we realized was the advice that we were giving on how to price our property and how kind of the strategy behind pricing and then the wait times and lead times, all that kind of stuff, uh, it wasn't working. It, and, and we kind of realized that kind of late, that the philosophy that we were kind of following with a lot of the industry leaders wasn't, it wasn't serving us and it wasn't helping us book our property. And 
So luckily for those first couple of months, and we knew it was going to be rough for the first couple of months. Like we knew that going in and we kind of prepared for that and that was okay. But we wanted to start getting our bookings up as quickly as we possibly could. And so uh, we reached out to another investor in our community. He shared with us, Chris, I'll forever be grateful to you. Um, and so he shared with us kind of what was, what, you know, what was successful for him. And that's that pricing strategy we started implementing into our business. So the very next episode after this, subscribe to the podcast if you're not already. Um, the very next episode that we're going to uh, present for you guys uh, or have for you guys is actually going to be kind of deep dive into our strategy how we approached it. And then we're actually have all the data to kind of back it up. So we're excited to show you guys that um, if you're listening to this podcast right now, you can actually go over to YouTube and see the, see the uh, videos. Uh, so you can actually see all the numbers that we're kind of working with there. I encourage you to do that. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm hope I'm hopeful that it'll be very helpful for other people. I think a lot of people who are struggling right now, I really think this is going to serve them well and it's going to help them out um, to get there, to get their small hospitality business up and crushing it. Absolutely. Yeah. Excited to share it. All right, guys. Hope you guys have a great night. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening. Hopefully this was really helpful to you in your journey of building a business. If you like what you heard, please click subscribe and go to iTunes and give us a rating. That helps us out tremendously when we're producing, hopefully, content of huge value to you. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And I hope that you have an amazing week. Go out there and crush it. I'll see you soon.